Greetings everyone. Today I have a very special episode. I'm going to be going back in time. I'm going to be doing a little show and tell. Because I was laying in bed and I was thinking about when I was a kid and I used to live in this trailer home. And I may do a separate video about like all the weird stuff I would do from like the ages of birth to 12 or whatever when I moved out to a bigger house. But I was thinking about like the technology, how it's changed. I used to, that's when I played that Pong. That's what I was thinking about that video I made when I was playing Pong on Atari. So, <clears throat> I was thinking about like music wise. So I thought I'd just go back through a lot of my old devices and show you like some of my old devices. Like, this is my old Sony flip cam that I used to make YouTube videos on. It's all like scuffed now. I don't think it has batteries, does it? I think you just plug it in and charge it. It's, it's got this little flip out USB, you stick it in there, pretty dope. And then phone wise, I'm using a Motorola right now, but I've also got a Google Pixel 4a I use for my drone. But then I found this one, this is my old Sprint Sidekick, I think it's called. It's got the little fold out keyboard for people that don't like to do the 10 key or whatever you get. 666-777-444 whatever you want to get the letter to get on the right letter pretty neat then I had the uh, Sprint PCS phone before that that's the one that's it's like a flip phone and then I had the uh, Nokia brick that everybody has so that's like all the phones I've had pretty much I had another Motorola before that one I'm using now that kinda did something weird so I had to get it replaced oh I also had a, a uh, Galaxy something an old galaxy it was silver I don't know what happened to that I think I gave it to somebody so <clears throat> then I want to talk about music and how music has kind of changed because let's go all the way back to after vinyl stuff started becoming kind of like tapes because a lot of you guys don't know how this stuff worked uh, this is an 8 track tape this is a Beatles Yellow Submarine this is one my dad had so when I lived in the trailer, my mom and dad's bedroom was at the far end, and they had like an eight-track player. They had like some weird stuff, like Ronnie Millsap. I think it was a blind piano player. <laughs> they had Ricky Skaggs, who was like a bluegrass country guy from the '80s. You probably never heard of either one of these guys. And they took me to a concert for this guy named Earl Thomas Conley one time. It was like the only concert I've ever been to until I got, became a security guard. And I worked a couple of them, but. I mean, I haven't been to like a serious, real concert before. It's always been like at a conference hall or like a the uh, Diddle Arena or whatever places like that. Um, so, Yellow Submarine, yeah, the eight tracks. I don't really understand how they worked. Like, I've got some cassette tapes here. I'll show you in a second. Actually, let me just zoom in. This is a cassette tape. For those of you who've never seen a cassette tape, well, this one's actually Eiffel 65 Euro Pop Blue Dubba Dee Dubba Die that Miley Cyrus has been ripping off lately. I don't know if she paid them or not. I'm I'm good. I'm feeling all right. She like changed the lyrics. I've also got Rob Zombie's Hellbilly Deluxe. These are some primo cassettes because these are like probably at the end of when they start stop making them. Because I used to have like Metallica and all kinds of weird cassettes. But you got this magnetic tape that comes out if you grab a hold of it and you'd use these like with an eraser and your pencil you could wind it and make sure it's like tight but you got like a list of the tracks that's a list of all your songs and you play it until it gets to the song you want and then you listen to it and I had oh let me look this up I had this like boom box uh magna box magna box Set player two deck reversible. Yeah, the technology got to where you could like reverse it. Like you wouldn't have to take the tape out. Is it like this one? Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe it's something like this. <clears throat> it was real nice looking. Maybe like hmm. Man, it's been a long time. Maybe like that one. That looks pretty familiar. You had this little knob. You can like play it backwards and forwards. So it's got auto reverse. Oh, maybe this one. Yeah. 
I think that's the one I had right there, boys. It looks like a fucking Transformer. <clears throat> so, because the, uh, the 8-tracks, I don't know how they even work. I think you just... You put it in and it just plays. Track 1 all the way to the end. And if you take it out and you put it in another 8-track player, I think it just starts over again. But how does it rewind? Because there's no controlling it. You can't do anything like fast-forward and rewinding with 8-track. You just put it in and it does its thing. Automatically. That's why the sets were so much better. And then you had those Walkmans and stuff. Um, so yeah, Yellow Submarine. And then, during the cassette tape years... <laughs> let me let me show you some of the songs I would listen to. I'm going to play this because I don't. they don't have a Vivo account, so I think this is old enough, maybe they're not going to like flag me. I'm not going to monetize this anyway. This is a band called Shakespeare's Sister my friend got me into. And it's called Stay. It looks it's so weird. Like, watch this video. There's this nice song part where she's singing. She's lost her lover or something. <laughs> Look at her eyes. <laughs> looks like she's drunk or high or have an orgasm or something. Fucking crazy eyes. So yeah, I was really into this song at the time. And there was another band, Tammy Wynette with KLF, which was like a black kind of rap band. Uh, is this on Vivo? I'm like, I think this is fine to play too. This was a dope ass song. I've never seen this video. It's got KLF like rippling in the transparent. And there's Tammy One It. Out of nowhere. Well, there's Japanese in this? This music was like so dope back then. I'm not gonna play too much of it, but you get the idea. Like, if you wanna look at this, this movie, video, whatever, play it. <laughs> it was so wild. Uh, this was back in my going to the roller skate rink and like tying yellow and green shoelaces around your knees and shit. This was like the 80s, 80s, like Saved by the Bell times when everybody was wearing all those crazy colors and shit. And they were like rolling their pants up. Um, there was oh, some other weird bands. I used to oh, Millie Vanilli. New Kids on the Block, Vanilla Ice. These were all like in my cassette tape days. I think I had Vanilla Ice on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles soundtrack. I'm not sure. No, I had his. Uh, did he have an album? I'm trying to think. I got really into New Kids on the Block for a while though. <laughs> Which is stupid. I forgot when I was talking about my uh, my old 80s black boy bands when I was live streaming the other night. There was one. It's like a white band, I think. Color Me Bad. Are they white? Yeah, these are white guys. But they were like a black band. Oh, there's one black guy. Re oh my god, the mustaches. It's so cheesy looking. So, um, yeah, so then CDs started coming out. <clears throat> now, my mom, I don't know if like we were sharing a CD player because I know I wouldn't have chosen these. My first three CDs after cassettes switched to CDs was John Cicada, <laughs> which is my mom's favorite singer at the time, I guess. He's like this Latin singer. I can't play this because it's probably copyrighted. Uh, Just Another Day Without You. And then, I think I picked CNC Music Factory. Everybody Dance Now. I think that was what I wanted. It was like a single or had like two songs on it. Oh, Ace of Bass. Yeah, that was around back then. And then, Michael Bolton. <laughs> I think it was another one of my mom's. And then I got into like uh, Phil Collins. No jacket required, Susudio, and all that kind of stuff. Oh, I was into some heavy, <laughs> some heavy hit music back then, dude. Uh, so then, I had this crappy CD player, I think. And then one day, my dad took me to Sears. I think I had saved up my money. Maybe I had started. Did I have a job back then? How did I get money? 
I had enough money to buy a CD player, like a good one, and I have it to this day. It's in my bedroom. I was going to bring it here and show you, but it's like a uh, jukebox. Uh, well, there's a video I'll show you. This one. This is a video of my CD player. Uh, this Japanese guy made. And it looks like that. So I kind of use it as a night light, so it's just got these like spinning lights and stuff to dance around. And you open up the front, and it's like a row, and it's got these really intricate, like, rubber teeth, like, gears, rubber bands that, like, precisely moves this head back and forth, and it pulls out a CD. You put in, like, the what number you want, like, if you want, like, 42, you put in, like, 4, and you hit a button to, like, make it to the 2, hit another button, and it would, like, go find it, it would pull it out, and then you pick what track you want, it's like a whole big mess. Like some, my aunt had this four thousand dollars system, and you just pull out a tray and you put five CDs in it, and you play those five. This one, you gotta like have a spreadsheet, and you make like a list of what's on it and like what numbers you gotta put in to get to it. It's kind of complicated, but it looks cool and it holds like sixty-one CDs in it. I don't know if he's gonna open it up and show you the insides, but if you carry it, if you tilt it forward when you carry it, they all just fall out and they get all like mixed in <laughs> and it fucks it up. I'm not sure where the CD goes once it pulls it out. He's not going to open it. He's turning the power off. I don't know. But it's pretty cool. Um, so that was my CD days. And then... Oh, when the MP3 players came out. So my first MP3 player was this thing. Called an iRiver. By... What company is that? Um, I don't even know. I think it's just an iRiver company. I think those were like $29 or something like that. And then, it wasn't very, like, it's pretty bulky. It didn't fit in your pocket good. But then I got this one called a Sansa Fuse. And I'll show you that. I've still got it. This is the first one I got. This was like 50 bucks, I think. And it was solid black, rubber on the back, and I used it so much, I rubbed all the black off of it. I used it for like those 12 years I was living in Lexington. When I would walk around as a guard, I would listen to this thing. And it's like got an actual tactile, like the original iPods. Yeah, the iPods have those little wheels you would spin around. Like you actually move it and you hit the buttons and it works really good. And then they switched to like the touch screen ones. And of course it's not like a, an iPhone touch screen. It's like a really shitty ass Japanese company's touch screen. So it doesn't work half the time. And I think this one even had like a video. You could play like a really shitty quality video on this little screen. But this one eventually broke after many loyal years. And I got another one. It was like cost twice as much. I think I paid like 120 for this little pink one. And then I immediately stopped using it because I started just using my phone <laughs> because I found a, a, an app that would like this was one of the only ones that you could play a long like three hour podcast and when you stop it and play it again it will remember where you were so then I figured out I could do that on my phone using like audiobook players or whatever some kind of app I've got you could actually set it up to like if you stop it and you play it it'll back up like 10 seconds to remind you where you were at Especially like listening to audiobooks. If you have to start over every time, you gotta like search and find it. I mean, this was really good for like searching because you just like hit a button and you just turn the wheel until it gets to where you're at and you hit play if you remembered it. But yeah, every now and then it would fuck up and you have to do that. But that pretty much covers it. Now I'm just like using my phone all the time to listen to everything. And I don't remember what happened to my other earphones that they are pretty much like this style but these are the only ones actually these are completely broken <laughs> these don't even have the full knobs on the end because they broke them off and then you get problems with the wires they get all twisted up and then you get like it's like bare copper wire in there so you it doesn't sound right real flimsy I just need like these type of earphones with like really high quality wire that would be like, wouldn't have to buy any more ever again. Maybe make these little nubs out of metal so they wouldn't break off. That would be dope. So pretty much covers it. That's all the old devices I can think of. Yeah, I think I went through a tape, CD, MP3. It's 
pretty much all there's been for music, right? Now it's just like streaming. I gotta get rid of like all of my old DVD and VHS collection. That was the thing about back in the day, you'd have this whole market for like cabinets that would just hold VHS tapes, and now nobody uses them at, at all. And they had like special drawers for like cassette tapes to fit into with little plastic linings and stuff, but like, oh, that's gone. I used to have like, I've got three CD towers in there, like my whole CD collection is in, but like they're pretty much useless now. I could just throw them all away, they're probably worthless. A lot of people think those like Black Diamond Disney VHS tapes are worth something, but they're not. It's like all old media is garbage. Plus, I've got like five or six of those like Velcro folders. It's like pages and pages of like sheets to put like CDs that you write from your PC on. I've got like anime collections on there, TV shows on there. But like, it's the quality is so bad, I'm sure, from like back in the day. Like, they didn't even have like 1080p quality back then. <laughs> you couldn't even read the subtitles probably because the. I don't know, back then we could, but <laughs> there's this like new Trigun anime that came out recently and I'm like, oh yeah, that old Trigun I had, that was like really shit quality compared to what this probably is. But man, I'd like to have like a company back then that made stuff like that, but then it would be like blockbuster now, like so worthless.